What would the world be like if we lived underwater in our communities? Would we live longer and be healthier, or would it just seem more like a prison? With the rising sea levels, this may not be as far-fetched as it seems. Having a house underwater would not only help us adapt to climate change, but also make our properties more unique and eco-friendly. Most of us think that fish are all there as in the deep blue sea, but this is not true. There are many other things to explore. Luckily for us, some people think about these things who go to work at diving centers and scuba schools to see exactly how they can find out. So let's join the dive to see 20 amazing things discovered underwater. Number 20. Pyramid of Spider Crabs Every year, hundreds of giant spider crabs, Leptomythrax gaimardii, congregate in huge, writhing mounds of carapaces and legs off the coast of Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. This collection of clumsy crabs is quite the sight, as you can guess. You might find it fascinating or frightening depending on your perspective. We think it's fantastic, personally. When spider crabs and other arthropods molt, the exoskeleton on the outside is removed. And the one on the inside grows larger and more modern. Near the Blaygory Pier in Port Phillip Bay, Victoria, Australia, P.T. Hirschfield and a few friends were scuba diving when they came across a most unusual sight. Around 1,000 spider crabs stacked on top of one another to form a massive pyramid on the ocean floor. The divers were looking for the congregating spider crabs because it was the time of year when all the spider crabs gathered for mass migration and synchronized mold, and they made this amazing discovery. According to this theory, all pre-migration activity is transient. For instance, on a recent two-hour drive, Hirschfield observed a few thousand spider crabs in the shallows at the beginning of the dive, but by the end of the trip, they had all but disappeared. As a result, it's unlikely that the pyramid survived for very long, which makes the encounter all the more noteworthy. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19 underwater sculpture in Park Grenada. This ocean is the most beautiful place for artists to show their work. Words from Jason DeClaire Taylor, a well-known sculptor who works underwater. The artist has sculptures worldwide, but you can be sure that there is no other underwater attraction in the Caribbean that is as unique as the one he added to the already beautiful waters of Grenada. The Grenada Underwater Sculpture Park is the first underwater sculpture park in the world. It's home to several of the sculptor's works. It's off the west coast of Grenada. Looking through the 65 cement pieces at the bottom of the Molinier Bay, you might find the lost correspondent, who some people call the newspaper man. Off the coast of Grenada, the person who made it sank it. Taylor says that was the one piece of art that changed the park from having one historical piece to having 26. A group of 26 Grenadian children holding hands make up this sculpture, a true icon. They are set up in a circle, and different people have different ideas about this piece of art. Some say it shows the circle of life, while others say the children show slaves who were thrown off ships long ago. Number 18. SS Thistlegorm the 1941 SS Thistlegorm was lost until 1955, when Jacques Cousteau recovered her during one of his first expeditions to the Red Sea. She became lost once more, and it wasn't found until 1992 that she became the diving attraction she is today. Typically, two dives are used to fully study the wreck. The first is outside the wreck, where the 126 meter ship's imposing flanks can be viewed. Looking aloft, you can see the shape of the ship's recognizable, ultimately useless weapons. The stern was torn off the main body of the wreck and is sitting at a 45% angle. Large groupers are frequently seen close to the prop, and the current typically flows from bow to stern. Watch out for the two Bren gun carriages on their side and the numerous Wellington boots when crossing the impact zone's debris. Numerous fish, railroad rolling stock, and the Thistlegorm's enormous winches that diving boats use for tying on may all be found above the deck area. Your guide will lead you through the holds on the second dive as we explore the inside of the wreck to see the Thistlegorm's cargo of BSA motorbikes, vehicles, ammunition, and various spare components. Watch out for schools of batfish, huge Napoleon Rassi, and occasionally sharks when you're back on the deck. Although no special training is needed to dive here, divers must be experienced and have at least an advanced open water certification due to the depth of the dives and the possibility of strong currents. Number 17. 
the Green Lake. These bubblegum pink lakes in Australia, the tiered Tavertine pools in Turkey, and a blood red waterfall in Antarctica are just a few examples of the many water features that nature has created that appear to be anything but natural. This lake, however, has an even cooler trick. At the same time each year, it overflows to a depth of up to 36 feet before disappearing almost totally on its own. In the village of Styria, Austria, there lies a lake known as Green Lake. Gruner Lake is peaceful and lovely in the winter, just like any other lake, and a county park encircles it. However, the ground below the mountain fills with water in the spring when the temperature rises, and the snow melts because mountains surround the area. The lake is 1 to 2 meters deep in the winter, but as the snow melts, it rises to 12 meters and the water covers the nearby park, creating the scene you see. From mid-May to June, when the lake reaches its maximum depth of about 12 meters, it's said to appear as its most picturesque. However, this only lasts for approximately a month because the floods typically start to recede around July. This lake, however, has an even cooler trick. At the same time each year, it overflows to a depth of up to 36 feet before disappearing almost totally on its own. Number 16. Giant Isopod Isopods are any of the nearly 20 species of large isopods in the genus Bathanamus. Isopods are crustaceans that are only distantly related to shrimp and crabs, which are decapods. They live in the cold, deep waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Bathanomus giganteus, the species on which the genera type is based, is thought to be the largest isopod in the world. However, other less well-known species of Bathanomus may reach a similar size. For example, B. kinslii. The giant isopods are known for how much they look like the much smaller common woodlouse, also called a pill bug. In 1879, French zoologist Alphonse Milne Edwards was the first to name the genus. Alexander Agassiz found a young male B. giganteus that lived in the Gulf of Mexico. At the time, Sir Charles Wyville Thompson and others had disproved the ideal of a lifeless or azoic deep ocean. This was exciting news for both scientists and the general public. Before 1891, no females were found. Most commercial fisheries don't care much about giant isopods, but they are known for attacking and killing fish caught in trawls. People can sometimes see things caught in the Americas or Japan in public aquariums. Number 15. Flamingo Tongue Snail The Flamingo Tongue Sea Snail is a borderline obsession for many of my friends. Siphoma gibbosum. There is always a cause to obtain more of it, no matter how many photos you take. Snails, notably Siphona gibbosum, of the phylum mollusca, mollusk, meaning soft body, and the class Gastropoda, gastropod, meaning stomach foot, are some of the most noticeable, picturesque, and stunning organisms on the reef. Most gastropods have the spiral-shaped shell we typically think of when we think of shells, but flamingo tongues and their relatives have shells that are more like a tongue twisted into a sea form. When the animal died, many beginning shell collectors discovered that the stunning flamingo tongue shell was a bland, uniform white tint. The mantle, a portion of the animal's foot that extends out of the shell, slit from both sides to cover the shell and serve as camouflage, is responsible for the stunning leopard-spotted pattern. It is freely extendable and retractable. If you look closely, you can see where the mantle has spread over the shell on both sides. The antennae detect food and predators, and the siphon used for breathing is also visible at the top. The walking foot's tip is visible at the shell's base. Number 14. The Real Kraken his Norwegian sources claim that the Kraken had a body that was as many miles in length, and when it appeared, it gave the appearance of covering the entire ocean. It was also described as having multiple heads and a multitude of claws. It could seize its prey with its claws, including ships, men, fish, and animals, and then bring its victims back into the ocean's depths. The elusive gigantic squid has wriggled its way into legend for thousands of years, generating tales of fearsome Krakens with bodies as enormous as islands. These tales have been passed from generation to other generation. A. Dukes is slightly shorter than that, with a maximum length of around 46 feet, 14 meters, roughly equivalent to a semi-trailer's length. But despite their size, these cephalopods are rarely never seen in the water. Most sightings of the behemoths originate from squids that are either dead or dying and wash up on coasts or become entangled in deep sea trawling nets. That all ended in 2012 when a group of marine scientists captured footage of a young A. dukes in its natural habitat around 2,000 feet 
630 meters below the sea's surface to the south of Japan. Number 13. The Sunken Roman City of Baia The Roman city of Baia, which is now submerged, was the indulgent Las Vegas of its time. Baia, a well-known resort town for centuries, catered to the leisure needs of the wealthy and powerful among the Roman elite. The city, built over naturally occurring volcanic vents, was renowned for its curative hot springs, which were abundant around the city and relatively simple to construct spas over. Numerous important individuals from antiquity, including Nero, Cicero, and Caesar, are known to have visited the city, and some of them even constructed long-term holiday homes there. Unfortunately, good times did not last and a Muslim force devastated the city in the 8th century. The ruins of the formerly opulent town were deserted by 1500. Most of the ancient ruins were submerged beneath the bay's shallow waters after the city ruins were cleared away due to the same volcanic vents that formerly attracted visitors to the area. One of the few underwater archaeological parks nowadays offers tours of Baia's ancient ruins. Glass-bottomed boats, snorkeling, and even scuba diving allow visitors to explore the city's crumbling structures and remarkably well-preserved statues while swimming amid the numerous ruins. The city's waters contain wonders even though it's no longer a vacation destination. Number 12. Yonaguni Monument A well-liked location for scuba diving is the Yonaguni Island region. Many would agree that it is a must-see when scuba diving close to Okinawa. Divers are now exploring the mysterious Yonaguni pyramid-like structure and its surroundings. The ruins of a Japanese Atlantis, an ancient city drowned by an earthquake some 2,000 years ago, can be found just below the waves near Yonaguni Jima as submerged stone constructions. Masaki Kamura, a geologist at the University of Ryukus in Japan, holds this opinion. For more than 15 years, he has been diving at the site to measure and chart its structures. Kimura claimed that each time he goes back to the dive boat, he is more certain than ever that underneath him lies the wreckage of a 5,000-year-old metropolis. The greatest building rises from a depth of 25 meters and resembles a complex, monolithic, stepped pyramid. Kihachiro Arataki made the puzzling discovery in the year 1986 as he was diving off the coast of Yonagumi Jima in quest of a new place to watch hammerhead sharks. But unfortunately, he wandered unintentionally beyond the boundaries of the prescribed safety zone. At a depth of 35 meters where he was standing, there was a large stone building lying on the ocean floor in front of him. Some experts in the field of archaeology have referred to this puzzling discovery as the archaeological find of the century. Number 11. An Ancient Computer the oldest computer was discovered off the perilous shore of the Greek island, Antikythera. It had been submerged for almost 2,000 years, and the bronze gears and mechanical pieces of the old astronomical computer progressively twisted and corroded as a result of being buried under the weight of the water, the sand, and the sunken ship that had once carried it. Coins, sculptures, and pottery pieces were scattered about, but a hunk of corroded metal attracted his attention. It turned out to be a component of the ancient computer that came to be known as the Antikythera Mechanism. While diving after dinner at the turn of the 20th century, a group of fishermen came across the sunken ship and the treasure slowly deteriorating inside. One of the fishermen swam back to his crewmates clutching a bronze arm, the first find from the Antikythera shipwreck to resurface. The arm belonged to the sunken ship Antikythera. Researchers had spent the better part of the last few decades using x-rays and CT scans to peer inside the Antikythera mechanism to piece together an image of what most likely appeared when it was first constructed between the years 270 BCE. Number 10. Emerald Treasure Jay Miskovich found 10,000 emeralds off Key West, Florida in 2010. Experts assessed his loot at $500 million. His discovery made headlines. Miskovich acquired emeralds and planted them in a 16th century shipwreck. Miskovich bought a map and pottery shard from Mark Cunningham in Key West in January 2010. The map brought him an L ship to Florida, international waters, 40 miles off of Key West. Miskovich and Elschlep uncovered hundreds of uncut emeralds approximately a mile from the marketplace. Miskovich scoped emeralds off the seafloor. Like cherries on a cherry tree, he said. 55 foot deep water was in the region. Even though the seafloor was strewn with shipwreck debris, no vessel was nearby. Miskovich and Elschlep recovered emeralds instantly. The 154 pounds of emeralds were worth millions. Miskovich began marketing the emeralds immediately. His brother Scott called his finance worker friends. Miskovich created Emerald Reef, LLC, with a retainer to support the emerald recovery. 
First, the business bought a 115-foot dinner cruise boat for $700,000 and equipped it as a salvage ship. Miskovich said the ship might pull in 10 to $20 million per trip. Miskovich didn't announce the find due to marine salvage law. Miskovich refused to tell anyone outside the recovery team about the whore's location or size. Miskovich found Cunningham and paid him $50,000 to relinquish any legal claim on the collision. Number 9. An Alien Saucer in 1947, a businessman named Kenneth Arnold said he saw a group of nine fast-moving objects near Mount Rainier in Washington while flying his small plane. This was the first well-known UFO sighting. Arnold said that the crescent-shaped objects moved like saucers skipping on water when he tried to guess how fast they were going. Using sonar, a group of treasure hunters from Stockholm found an odd disc-shaped object on the bottom of the Baltic Sea between Sweden and Finland. Above, it looks a little like the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. It's big, with a diameter of 197 feet and about 275 feet of water. There is a rough path on the sea floor that goes to or away from it. It's about 1,600 feet long. A part of the Baltic sea floor found by Swedish treasure hunters last summer is again making headlines. The latest media coverage is based on an hour-long radio interview with Peter Lindbergh, the Ocean X team leader who made the discovery. In the interview, Lindbergh makes a series of vague and intriguing comments about the strange and mysterious seafloor object that his team had been exploring for a year. Number 8. Team with GoPro Solves 27-Year Mystery Max Barenka, who is 13 years old, has always been interested, so it was almost natural for him to look a little closer when he saw something under the surface of Griffin Lake in British Columbia that he says didn't make sense. No one could be sure, but it looked like a car that had flipped over and was sitting 15 feet down in the water, just 10 feet from the Trans-Canada Highway. A few days later, when Mounties from Revelstoke arrived, Max became their guide because his family owns a cabin on the lake. Max said, We took them out in our boat and showed them where it was. The video he took with his GoPro in its strong, waterproof case proved it was a car. Turned over and covered in mud, it was sitting on the lake bed with plants and fish. The RCMP and their dive team came back after three days. They were able to dive down and get a license plate, said Corporal. It went back to a case of a missing person from 1992. The plate came with a name, Janet Ferris, 69, from Vancouver Island. Ferris drove to Alberta by himself that fall 27 years ago, which was 14 years before Max Warenka was born. Max said, I couldn't imagine not knowing what happened to a loved one for that long. Number 7. 1,700-year-old intact egg An intact egg from the Roman Empire that is almost 1,700 years old has been found by archaeologists. Only this whole egg has ever been discovered in the British Isles. This unexpected finding is significant because it sheds light on ritualist activities and beliefs. They discovered a Middle Iron Age settlement in the agricultural hinterland of a probable nucleated Roman settlement of Fleet Marston here. This was previously significant commerce, administrative, and agricultural center and was located on a major thoroughfare. When archaeologists accidentally cracked three of a basket of 1,700-year-old Roman eggs while digging it up, they blasted the world's oldest stink bomb. During the dig, archaeologists discovered an amazing collection of artifacts. During a survey of the Berryfields housing estate, the objects were discovered. Four fragile eggs were initially discovered, but three cracked and released a potent odor. According to researchers, the findings illuminate Fleet Marston during the Roman area. When digging in the heavily flooded area, archaeologists discovered an unusually large quantity of sediments in a pit. Most of these artifacts were of an organic origin and would have normally decayed over time. Among the things found were leather shoes, wooden tools, and a wicker basket that may have once contained bread. Number 6. China's Sunken City of Xichang Xichang is in the country of Chun'an in Zhejiang, China. A city built about 1300 years ago is now between 26 and 40 meters deep. In 1959, the city and the valley were on purpose flooded to make a man-made lake and a hydroelectric power station. Now it could be a unique paradise for divers. Surprisingly, the city hasn't changed much. It still has buildings, walls, and even wooden details. A film crew has been hired to make a movie about the old city. Archaeologists are amazed by how well Xichang has been kept but there are no places for tourists to dive. Hopefully the site will be open for everyone to see in the future. The man-made Qiandao Lake, which is also called Thousand Island Lake, is a popular place for tourists to visit and a place to have fun. The mountainous area is beautiful, and you should go there. 
The province's climate is subtropical, meaning it has four distinct seasons. Fall is nice because it's dry, warm, sunny, and full of colors. The diving lights only let divers see about 2 meters, and the underwater city is 26 to 40 meters deep, 85 to 131 feet. But they found that everything was still there, even wooden beams and stairs. Number 5. River of Cenote Angelita in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, just below the Cenote Angelita Cave, is an amazing underground river that flows. The flow of this incredibly beautiful natural phenomenon is caused by hydrogen sulfide. Since fresh water is heavier than salt water, it sinks to the bottom of the river until it forms a layer, making it a real underwater river. The Cenote Angelita River has different layers of fresh and salt water that go down more than 100 meters. The color of the leaves and branches of the nearby trees, which float right along the riverbanks because the water is so thick, adds to the beauty of the river. Cenote is the word for a cave with fresh water. It's often used to describe doline karst, a type of sinkhole common in other parts of the world, especially Central America. The ancient Mayans considered cenote sacred and used them for religious ceremonies, including violent human sacrifices. Getting to this cave is not simple. For the first 20 meters, the water appears clear. After that, it gets more and more cloudy. The dive into the cave goes as far down as 55 meters below the surface, so only very experienced divers should try it. Number 4. A 200-year-old warship in Lake Ontario. A group of retired individuals who explored the Great Lakes in search of shipwrecks using high-resolution sonar technology discovered the shipwreck of Washington, the second oldest known wreck in those waters. On November 6, 1803, a storm on Lake Ontario caused the ship to sink while it was crossing the lake with a full cargo of commodities from India. At the very least, five individuals were on board, including two crew members and three passengers, and every single one perished. The ship was a sloop, a sort of commercial vessel with only one mast. Sloops were used on the Great Lakes for a short time before being supplanted by schooners, which had at least two masts and were regarded as more effective. It was constructed in 1797 close to Erie, Pennsylvania, and it made its first journey in 1798. Construction on it had begun in 1797. It would spend the next three years plying the waters of Lake Erie before being acquired by the consortium of Canadian businessmen. After that, they harnessed a herd of oxen and dragged it on rollers through the land to Lake Ontario. After that, the ship was put to work traveling between Niagara and Kingston in Ontario, carrying furs and other household items. Number 3. Christ of the Abyss in San Frutoso, Italy Christ of the Abyss, or Il Cristo degli Abissi in Italian, a submerged bronze statue of Jesus Christ by Guido Galletti. The original cast is in the Mediterranean Sea between Camogli and Portofino, on the Italian Riviera near San Fruttuoso. Other copies of the statue worldwide exist, including underwater in churches and in museums. In 1954, the Christ of the Abyss statue was put on the sea floor in San Fruttuoso Bay. The bay is on the side of the Portofino promontory that faces south. It's right in the middle of Camogli and Portofino. The statue was at a depth of 17 meters, close to the bay's eastern side, in an area blocked off by signal buoys. This is one of the most well-known places to dive in the area. Due to its size and the fact that it's not too deep, the statue can be seen from the surface. Because of this, there are a lot of free divers, snorkelers, and people who just want to swim there to check it out. In 1993, the original clay mold without the arms was found in a foundry. Later, the arms were found and put back on, but the hands had to be made again. The reshaped clay sculpture is now on display at Ravenna, Italy's National Museum of Underwater Activities. Number 2. Truck linked to 1993 missing person case. The corpse of Maynard Cohen has not been found to this day. However, a discovery made by two divers just last week may bring some closure to the disappearance of the Prosser man in 1993. Courtney and John Talbot made a stunning find last Thursday while scuba diving in the Hat Rock State Park Marina. They came upon a red pickup truck submerged 20 feet underwater just past the pier of the well-known leisure spot in Umatilla County. The authorities could determine that Cohen, a resident of Prosser, Washington, who had been reported missing in 1993, was the truck's owner. The skeletal bones, as well as Cohen's wallet and identity, were discovered inside the vehicle, according to the under-sheriff of Umatilla County, Jim Littlefield. 
He stated that the skeletal remains had been delivered to the medical examiner's office, but he did not know how long it would take for the bones to be recognized. Talbot stated that the water in the marina is cloudy and that they wouldn't often dive in that location because of it. Something else, though, did turn up. while well, the boat's propeller never did. The Talbots discovered a truck that was in relatively excellent condition despite having deteriorated red paint and a bed that was weighted down with garbage and mud. Number 1. Giant jellyfish the size of a human spotted by divers off the English coast. Off the southwestern coast of England, a diver was shocked to see a huge jellyfish that was as big as a person. The amazing creature, a barrel jellyfish, was seen by biologist and TV host Lizzie Daly near Falmouth. Daly called the sighting breathtaking. In an interview with Madeline Gregory of Vice, Daly says, Being next to an animal that big makes you feel small. It's something we'll always remember. Daly and Abbott had been diving for about 30 minutes when they saw a single huge jellyfish unlike anything they had ever seen. Over the next hour or so, they swam next to the strange creature and recorded footage which they later put into a 2 minute video and posted on social media. The animals, the largest of their kind in the UK, have 8 freely arms with stinging tentacles and can grow up to 3 feet long and spend the summer and the warm winters off the west coast. Few people meet members of the species in their natural habitat. Instead, most people meet marine animals when they wash up on beaches. The lion's mane jellyfish is much bigger than a barrel jellyfish. It can grow up to 120 feet long, longer than the average blue whale. Which of these creatures is beautiful? Which is the scariest? Which is the most amazing creature you ever thought could exist? Share your opinions in the comment section below.